coronavirus cases in Los Angeles County comes to 243,935. The confirmed number of deaths reaches 5,878. Here in Torrance, the total number of confirmed cases is 1,301, with total confirmed deaths remaining at 64. Welcome to COVID-19 Today. I'm Rhiannon Trutanich. It's 4 p.m. on Wednesday, September 2nd. Los Angeles County Public Health officials and the county's Board of Supervisors shared some good news this afternoon. Effective today, hair salons and barbershops are allowed to reopen immediately at 25% capacity for indoor service as long as infection control safeguards are in place. Business owners who have made modifications to bring services outdoors are encouraged to continue doing so while bringing clients indoors for services that can only be done in the salon. Supervisor Hilda Solis shared in today's press briefing that COVID-19 transmission is on the decline and the county seems to be back on the path to recovery with more openings in sight. County health officials also announced that beginning Monday, September 14th, K-12 schools will be allowed to offer on-campus services for small cohorts of students who need the support or have special needs, especially those who have individualized education plans or are English learners. Schools are required to submit an operational plan to the Department of Public Health and must comply with county health orders to bring those small number of students back on campus in full compliance and bring indoors if you are outdoors. Other restrictions such as gyms only allowed to operate outdoors and the closure of theme parks and movie theaters still remain. Officials say this is a cautious and measured reopening with plans to closely monitor all of the data needed to ensure another spike does not happen after the Labor Day holiday. Currently, the county's seven-day average is 10 cases per 100,000 residents. In order for the county to allow more reopening, that number must fall below seven and stay that way for at least two weeks before moving into the next tier level. The public is reminded to continue to be diligent in keeping up with protective measures to help slow the spread. Everyone is reminded to continue wearing those cloth face coverings, practice social distancing, and avoid crowds in confined spaces, be flexible, and be willing to leave any space that becomes too crowded. August became the deadliest month for California when it came to deaths related to the coronavirus pandemic. An analysis by the Los Angeles Times reported 3,745 deaths connected to COVID-19, an 18% increase over July. The news comes as the total number of cases in California passes the 700,000 mark, keeping our state in first place. Despite the grim news, our state is making steady progress on this pandemic with the number of infections, hospitalizations and deaths continuing to fall. The Trump administration is ordering a halt on evictions nationwide through December and it's being enacted through the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The new ban requires renters to sign a declaration saying they don't make more than $99,000 a year or twice that if filing a joint tax return. They also must list that they have no other option if evicted other than becoming homeless or living with more people in close proximity. The order does not offer landlords a way to recover their lost rent. While evictions for reasons other than non-payment of rent are allowed, the government says it will impose criminal penalties on landlords who violate the ban. California will soon have a new reporting system to handle all COVID-19 testing results. This comes after its current system called the California Reportable Disease Information Exchange, or CalReady, malfunctioned in July, compromising its results. The technical failure resulted in as many as 300,000 test results not being uploaded to the database. That in turn disrupted the state's response to the pandemic. Governor Gavin Newsom's administration signed a contract with a software company called Optum Insight Inc. to provide the new system which is expected to launch next month. Smokers may be at higher risk for being hospitalized or being placed on a ventilator if they contract coronavirus. 
Cedar sinais experts say the illnesses that smokers often develop impact many of the same major organs as COVID-19. Cardiologist Joseph Ebinger says, quote, smokers often have serious heart and lung health problems already. Add COVID-19 to the mix and you are likely to get a very sick patient. They just don't have the physiological reserves to deal with the massive inflammatory attack brought on by the coronavirus, end quote. In addition to compromised immune systems, experts say smokers and vapors already have lung problems that leave them more vulnerable not only to COVID-19, but also to the flu, pneumonia, or bronchitis. New efforts are taking place to make the COVID-19 vaccine accessible for everyone once it becomes available. The National Academies of Science, Engineering and Medicine announced plans to draft a preliminary framework to assist policymakers in planning equitable distribution of the vaccine. This is in response to a request from the National Institutes of Health and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The nonprofit formed a committee that will consider various factors that can affect equitable distribution, such as population, health disparities, individuals at higher risk due to health status, occupation or living conditions, and the geographic distribution of active virus spread. The com committee will also look into how communities of color can be assured access to COVID-19 vaccines in the U.S. For the full project description, you can check out nationalacademies.org. More small business employees in California may soon be able to take time off of work to care for new babies or sick relatives. Governor Gavin Newsom is expected to sign a bill that will expand job protection for the state's family leave program. The state first passed a law a decade and a half ago that allows workers to take time off when a family member gets sick or when they have a baby. Participants pay into the program and earn the benefits through the disability insurance. The current law allows only businesses with at least 50 employees to implement this family leave program, guaranteeing job security while they're away. Senate Bill 1383 would expand that to include businesses with at least five workers, giving more people the opportunity to take up to 12 weeks of family leave. The bill also expands the definition of family in the California Family Rights Act to include siblings, grandparents, adult children, and parents-in-law. While some applaud the measure, saying it'll help bring more equity to the working class in California, others voice concerns that it could devastate small businesses, especially during the pandemic. If you haven't received your unemployment check, it could have gone to another mailbox. California's Employment Development Department is warning people about unemployment payment fraud as mail gets delivered to the wrong addresses. The EDD is also investigating why some people are receiving multiple pieces of EDD mail when they haven't filed an unemployment claim. Employment fraud investigators are asking people who receive such mail to go to their website, eddca.gov, and report it immediately. Kids who don't have access to nutritious meals can eat for free through the rest of this year. The U.S. Department of Agriculture announced that it's extending its free meals program through December to continue serving children in need during this pandemic. Starting today, the Torrance Unified School District announced it's able to serve free meals to anyone 18 and under, not just TUSD students, until December 31st. Bulk meal pickups are available on Mondays and Thursdays at multiple school sites. The school district encourages families to apply for the meal program. To do so, you can go to family.titank12.com and click on the tab that says apply for meals today. Expect scorching weather this Labor Day weekend. The Los Angeles County Department of Health released an extreme high heat warning as temperatures are expected to peak again this Friday through Sunday. The Public Health Department is reminding everyone to take precautions to avoid heat-related illnesses. Here are some tips. Drink plenty of water throughout the day. If you must go out, plan your day in advance and try to avoid the hottest hours. Wear lightweight and light-colored clothing and don't forget your sunscreen. Never leave children or pets in cars and call 911 if you see a child or a pet in an unattended vehicle. And finally, your power company's website or contact them by phone to see if you're scheduled for a rolling power outage. 
Alaska Airlines is the latest airline to join in announcing that they will no longer charge change fees. This is just one of the more than 100 ways the airline is trying to ease travelers to fly again. American, Delta, and United Airlines recently shared their decisions to permanently scrap domestic change fees. U.S. air travel is down nearly 70 percent compared to this time last year. The four largest airlines in the U.S. reported a combined loss of $10 billion in their second quarter. According to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics, Alaska made $192 million in ticket cancellations and change fees in 2019. The airline's fee waivers are effective immediately and apply to all flights. For more information, you can visit alaskaair.com. By now, you've probably heard that time is ticking to fill out your 2020 U.S. Census. The deadline to participate in the nationwide survey was cut a month short to September 31st, but now the U.S. Census Bureau is planning to end in-person counting in the San Diego area and some other parts of the country as early as September 18th. Now, if you haven't completed the census just yet, you can do so anytime before September 30th. Just visit 2020census.gov. The UC admission process will look very different for future prospects. A superior court judge ruled that the University of California system can no longer use ACT or SAT tests as a deciding factor for admissions. The ruling by a judge in Alameda County noted that the pandemic has restricted the ability of students to take the exams. This comes at months after the Board of Regents unanimously voted to waive the standardized testing requirements until 2024. The bold move is considered a victory to students with disabilities as well as those from less privileged backgrounds who are unable to access the tests. Toy makers are seeing an increase in sales during the pandemic as people are turning to build Legos, play board games, and spend more time at home. Lego sales jumped 14% in the first half of 2020 compared to the same period last year. And its operating profit rose to $622 million as a result. A popular board game called Catan, which was previously called Settlers of Catan, reportedly sold more than 32 million units during its 25th year in business and is considered one of the best-selling board games of all time. The Olympics is coming to Los Angeles in 2028, and we now have a look at its official logo. More than 20 people, including athletes, artists, and celebrities, contributed to this one-of-a-kind emblem. LA28 organizers say this collective effort is designed for the digital age and showcases creativity, self-expression, and inclusion. Some of those who participated in the making of this animated logo include Billie Eilish and Reese Witherspoon. Torrent City Council members met online last night to discuss city business. Longtime Torrance employee Alan Emerson was honored for 38 years of service in the Community Services Department. The city also declared September 3rd through October 3rd as Paint the Town Purple Month in an effort to raise awareness and spread the word about the upcoming Virtual Relay for Life Cancer Awareness and Fundraiser. Residents and businesses are encouraged to participate by decorating their businesses and homes with purple ribbons and purple lights. The Relay for Life virtual event in Torrance takes place on Saturday, October 3rd. Due to the pandemic, the annual event has turned to the web to keep up with their annual tradition and hopes the community will continue to participate to help save lives and raise awareness of the various deadly cancers. This year marks the 18th year that Torrance has taken part in the Relay for Life event. This is the largest fundraising event for the American Cancer Society. To date, Torrance has raised more than $3 million over the years. According to the American Cancer Society, 1.8 million people will be diagnosed with cancer this year, and events like these help to raise money for cancer research. Lights of Hope also takes place September 12th, so be sure to mark your calendar. You can look up Relay for Life Torrance for more information. And the newest members of the Torrance Youth Council were formally introduced to the City Council in a slideshow, sharing a photo and a quote from each of the 18 students. 
The Youth Council was formed 43 years ago to be an advisory body to the City Council on matters related to teens and students. Members represent all of the Torrance public and private high schools as well as El Camino College. City Manager Leroy Jackson also gave the Council an update on the state's new guidelines released last week as the City waits for county updates which are expected to be released today along with the City's response to the COVID-19 health pandemic and how businesses are being assisted during this difficult time. Several more agenda items were discussed. You can catch replays of the entire meeting tonight and tomorrow at 10 p.m. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. It can be seen here on City Cable, streaming online, and on demand on YouTube. Well, we're just two days away until the launch of a brand new show called Weekends in Torrance. This replaces COVID-19 Today on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays and airs at 2 p.m. Weekends in Torrance features fun things to do around the city in the age of COVID-19. Now, if you haven't been back to some of your favorite places since the pandemic, like the farmer's market, dining at a restaurant outdoors, or getting a little exercise in at Sea Air Golf Course, we take you to some of those places and show you the safety measures and protocols they have in place to ensure a safe and socially distanced visit. We hope you'll tune in and join us as we travel around town and share fun, COVID-compliant places to visit during the weekends in Torrance. Tune in this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 2 p.m. right here on City Cable. We'll also stream online at torrentca.gov, and you can find us on YouTube. As families work through the second week of the new school year, we want to hear how distance learning is going for you and your kids. Share what tips and tricks seem to be working as your family navigates through these difficult times and unique learning models. Now, whether you have a preschooler or a teen in high school and every grade in between, we want to hear from you. Email us at COVID19today at torrentca.gov. Well, before we go at the end of each program, we like to share stories from our community, feel good pictures, images, and videos that reminds us of how resilient our community is and how Torrance truly cares. Well, despite the pandemic, restaurants are continuing to shift operations and adapt to the latest health orders. Well, one local favorite, Betalino's, is forging ahead with what would have been Dine LA Week and is offering a three-course dinner at a discounted rate. The special runs this month until the 20th. You can dine in their outdoor patio or order takeout. But what a great way to bring some normalcy back during this crisis and offer some fun deals to the community. We love hearing these great stories. If you have one to share, please email us. We'd love to hear from you. That's our update for COVID-19 today. We hope you'll join us again tomorrow at 4 p.m. as Ben McCain brings you the latest updates. Be safe, stay healthy, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.